on any given day, we are exposed to over 3,000 messages. I think about what I just said. The attention span is less than 30 seconds. You're starting your business. You have a business. You're exposed to over 3,000 messages a day. What's the challenge here? I'm trying to break through that flood, isn't it? Now, let's look at the Clippers. Over a course of 24 hours, when I first heard the story, I thought it was a joke. The first I did. But look how the messaging just extended itself. And everybody's remembering the bad. Despite the three to 4,000 messages we get with each day. The power of the brand. So we go to the next slide. Thank you. So I know it's a little bit fuzzy, so let me just kind of highlight a couple of things up here. As you're beginning to think about a brand, what you want to do is to identify your long-term vision for your business. What do you want to do? Now again, I recently wrote an article about this in Cranes. Um, people get the vision statement confused with the mission statement all the time. The vision statement is simply an aspirational statement of where do you want to be? Where do you want to be long-term? Your mission statement is what you do every day and why you go to work. You also need to understand the consumers that you want to target. Understand who you want to go after from a business standpoint. The purpose of your plan is to build and enhance relationships with your customers. It's not about you. I hate to disappoint you, but it's not about you. I got my good buddy over here, Greg Clark. Greg, raise your hand. He's a top executive at at and so every time Greg and I go places, and Greg, I've known Greg since 1966. We go together in Northwest Detroit, Cheyenne Street. How do you drive a seven mile? Okay. <laughs> but when Greg and I go places, people see him as AT&T. Fair statement? And they will always ask him, hey, I got an issue with AT&T, whatever. Or I got a great service with AT&T. He represents the brand, works directly for the president of the company. Okay? So think about our level, think about us. People are going to identify with us. So we have to make sure that our challenge is to make sure that we're building and enhancing relationships with our existing customers. And then we also need to identify customers that are profitable to us. So let me go back up to number one for a second about the vision. So yes, as I introduced that right at home. Some of you may have read it, some of you may not. It's okay, it doesn't matter. I hope you read it. Yeah. All right. But it's called Small Talk. I started writing it four years ago. I was approached by the legendary Sam Logan. Yeah, Sam um, ran the Michigan Chronicle forever. He's a legend of the city. And he said, Mark, we want you to start something for the Chronicle and write, write this column because we want to begin to focus on small business owners. So I said, sure, I'll do it. I've known it for three years. But before I started writing the column, I had a vision for it. My vision for the column was, it's not about me. You read my columns, they're never about me. I'm using it as a tool for entrepreneurs to tell their story and identify tips and resources for you. And also where entrepreneurs can learn from each other. We've all had challenges of starting out. I've worked in corporate America for 28 years. I've been a senior vice president. We're directors of like presidents of organizations. I've presented boards of directors. You name it, I've done it. Right? But when it comes to us as entrepreneurs, a lot of people approach me and say, how do you? How do you? How do you? That's how my column started out. One day, it's about the power of the network now, but you tie it into your brand. Greg and I were actually down at the auto show, Charity Preview, in January of last year, not this year. And somebody said, we want to try to get you right for craze. I said, well, I don't know if I can do that. I said, hey, yeah. So in the part of that discussion, I ran into someone from Cranes, and I said, hey, I would love to have the opportunity to write a blog for you, a column, or something. He said, we know who you are, we use your stuff. Cool. Okay? So cool. So long story short, as soon as I left, I pinged the email. They said, we want you to submit your work to us. And I did. I got a phone call three days later, so you're going to start in six weeks. That was 13 months ago. Okay? Oh, that's okay. <laughs> and, and so some of my columns have been picked up nationally. Now, 
This is where I'm going with this about my vision. My vision has always been to go into the broadcast media, right? Eat with the Chicago, we'll try to tell a story and help people. Now, my brother, as an aside, was a long time DJ here in Detroit for 30 years. You have heard of his name. What about Smooth Jazz B98.7 at the time? His name was Aubrey Lee. Yeah, yeah Aubrey was already for 30 years. And I asked him the other day, I said, Did you miss it? He said, Oh, man. He said, You know what? I've been there for 30 years. He worked at WJOB, Mix 92.3, B98.7, yada, yada, yada. He said, Every day I can get up and be at the station by 6 a.m. He said, So I got a chance to sleep in. But I got a phone call from CBS Detroit. CBS Detroit owns WWJ, WXYT, and some other stations across the city. They said, Mark, what do you do a radio show for us? I said, really? What do you want me to do? We want you to do your column, Small Talk with Mark S. Wheeler Radio. So, we have to finalize the deal and be a little bit premature. The concept right now is that I will be doing at least a 13-week radio show starting this summer. We promoted heavily on WWJ, I do radio commercials for them. And then I will have an hour long talk show host. I do an hour long talk show. So it's apropos for this situation because I'm building my brand, I'm extending my brand, I'm tying into my vision that we talked about. And oh, by the way, I'll be, of course, some entrepreneurs to talk to. Hint, hint. Okay? And I'm also proud to say that somebody in Ann Arbor, Michigan, said, We heard about what you're going to do. They're funding my whole radio show. And the company that's going to be is Domino's. Right. And then after somebody heard me speak this morning, a major financial institution said we need to be thinking anyone to fund you as well. So it's the power of networking and the power of your brand. Greg and I talk a lot of trash with each other. <laughs> we do. We go out usually on Friday evenings, just the two of them have been doing this for 30 years, and maybe two of the other guys, we sit on and shoot the breeze. But you guys will never see that sad of me. Right, right, right. Not in right, right, right. that situation. Okay? <laughs> the power of the brand. So if you can go through that slide. Thank you. So now I want you to think of yourself and your business as a brand. Not just as a product, or not just as a service, but think of yourself as a brand. Thank you. So, all right, work. All right, can I go back over here if I get my notes? Oh, there you go. So ask yourself, ask yourself a very simple question, right? What does your business represent? There's actually two questions. What does your business or your potential business represent? Then ask yourself this question. Why would you buy yourself? And don't give me the obvious answer that had the best prices in time. Don't give me the obvious answers at the best product. Don't tell me that I was an engineer of Ford Motor Company and I was downsized out. Because everybody can tell me that story. So what I'm going to ask you to think of yourself as a brand, what I'm asking you to do is to think deeply about you. Think about who you are as a business and go beneath the surface and to talk about what truly makes you different. That's a hard exercise. I was with the CEO yesterday of Southfield, and they asked me to come in and help them to create personal brands for the entire executive leadership team. So I asked him a question. Would you ever buy yourself? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, why? I said, yes. I said, why? <laughs> well, because I've been doing this for 20 years. I said, so what? <laughs> Think about it. They said, well, because I'm on time. I said, so what? You're still not telling me anything. Then it got it, the light bulb went off. So I'm going to ask you to think about your business, whether you're in business or you started out, or you hit the wall. Go back and reassess your business and what makes you different. So if you go to the next slide, go back uh, over. Okay. Oh, okay. Right, that's, 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 okay, I can do this. Um, so I kind of jumped ahead, but Understand your brand, okay? Now, no matter how big, how small you are, understand your competition. Understand your competitive set. What makes you different? Now, I'm going to pause for a second and use myself as an example. 
Yeah, I do have a place here in Michigan. I'm in Metropolitan Detroit, but I, I fly down to Florida quite a bit. Place in Jacksonville, Florida. Talk about the power of the network for a second. So, I started working out. I was a college athlete at Eastern Michigan. Then, of course, life got in the way. You know, years later, I got married. Had two great kids. My kids are about 27 and 25. I know I don't look that old. <laughs> Be careful. But about five years ago, my parents had a physical challenge. They both were alive, thank you. Um, but I saw it. And I was starting my business, which is actually six years old, and I was also working at Portland. My blood pressure went through the roof. I was at 170 over 110. Oh, yeah. And I was 25 pounds heavier. In fact, I'm, a, I'm part of an advertising campaign called True EMU. You can see my face. The face of me in this campaign was 20 pounds ago. I didn't even recognize myself. So long story short, I started working out. I've been doing intensely now for the last four or five years. I dropped 20, 25 pounds, changed my eating habits. My blood pressure is 120 over 83. Okay. Uh, thank you. But where am I going with this? Now I do spinning. I got hooked on spinning. And I was in Jacksonville, Florida about six months ago. Somebody asked me a very simple question. What do you do? I started to share what I did. A guy overhears the conversation. I am not making this up. We will run the bikes, get ready for stuff. He says, you work in marketing? I said, yes. He said, you do consulting? I said, yes. You work at Blue Cross? I said, yes. He says, I want to talk to you. I said, really? I said, what's going on? We're in the process of hiring someone to help us with our strategic marketing plan. I said, really? I said, tell you what, when this class is over, don't leave. <laughs> he says, we're going to meet the song and or the steam room. That's a true story. Class was over. We walked to the steam room. He gave me details of what they're looking for. I said, you have to email me from, uh, tonight. It was a Sunday. So we finished the conversation in the steam room. I emailed him. A month later, I was sitting down in a meeting with the president of the company. His leadership team asked me to pitch my business. About a month ago, he calls me up and says, we want you to come down and give a speech. And I did. During the lunch break, the president comes up to me and says, we're looking for somebody to help us do some research and some planning. I said, yes. He says, can you submit us a proposal? I said, what do you need to buy? He says, so we're on COB. I said, okay. So we did an entrepreneur, you can't make excuses. You cannot make excuses, it's part of your brand. I responded with an hour and a spare. They called me up and said, you got the business. They got the business. Then they went on to say, Mark, now this is being looked at by New York City. So if you do a great job on this, New York is looking at what you're doing. I just cut to the chase. I said, you're telling me there's more money on the table. There's just plenty of more money on the table. <laughs> Part of my brand. Hear what I just said. Okay? I didn't overpromise. I didn't under deliver. I made no excuse. The plan is there's no way I can do it in 24 hours. Why? Why? I chose this path. I know what I'm getting into. So when we think about what's making your brand relative and unique to the competition, think about that. So how do we do this? Let me go to the next slide. Understand why your consumers will purchase you, whether or not your product, a service. You know, like I said, I teach at Eastern Michigan University and Walsh College, amongst other places. I've had students come to me and say, I love the way you teach, that we've not been telling other students about you as a professor. I'm like, cool. Because nobody sent you guys to email, so why did you prompt me? But here they are saying, we want other students to take you. So my point here is that focus on, focus on your business. Understand what you're truly trying to do. What is it that's going to connect with your corporate client base or your consumer client base? You need to understand. Let's go to the next slide. 